Hello, hello. Welcome to Rise Above with Tammy Lynn. I am Tammy Lynn, and I'm honored to have this opportunity to speak into your life, to empower and encourage you to continue running your race, fighting that good fight of faith, and finishing strong in Jesus' name. I am here on assignment to talk to the battle-weary souls. I am here again to roar with a restore over your kingdom marriages. The Lord has just given me an assignment in this season to roar, restore, because the Lion of Judah himself is roaring, restore, and it is specifically over God-ordained kingdom marriages. There has been a marriage crisis within the church, and he told me, he says, I, Christ, <laughs> is uh, intervening in those marriage crises. I have explained on a previous video there is just um, a lot of other areas of ministry that I'm passionate about. <laughs> and to be honest, I um, yesterday I found myself, like I, I, there's other people I also want to minister to that is on my heart, but I have not been able to just get a release. I say that because this message, if you're listening to it and you're not standing for you know your kingdom marriage, then still I believe the Holy Spirit can speak to you because many of God's people is battled weary. We are in a season that God has decreed that there is about to be a shock wave of his glory, um, mega manifestations of his promises. I mean, it, it, it is coming. It is coming. He is ushering it in. He is doing a new thing. But also with that, you know, hell is very well aware of what is getting ready to take place and hell is threatened by this so it's like I'm, I'm thinking about so many people that are going through different battles but he has given me a specific assignment and he will not release me from it so I'm definitely particularly speaking in to those of you who are standers who are standing in the gap for your God-ordained kingdom marriage I am particularly speaking to those of you who your prodigal has abandoned God and has abandoned you and your family. The Lord woke me up shortly after two o'clock this morning. And honestly, I was just tired. I did get up. I went into my kitchen, but I just wanted to, to go back to bed. But I knew that I knew that he wanted me to war. And so I began to war. I began to war with a roar of restore over kingdom marriages across the world. I began calling out to heaven to move on your behalf. I say that not for my glory, but to let you know that God sees you. He remembers you. He has not forgotten what he's told you. And he is going to come through for you. I am here to lock arms with you and to encourage you to keep standing, keep fighting that good fight of faith. I am just sensing your destinies. I am sensing your family. I am just sensing the cries and the call, the petitions to heaven that you are releasing for uh, restoration and reconciliation of your marriage, of your family. Hell came in violently. Maybe you saw it coming. Maybe you didn't, you know, maybe, you know, you're at the point that you realize that, you know, two wrongs just truly don't make a right. And so it certainly didn't go right. It went left and it went all wrong. But that does not change God's mind on the fact that he says, what I've brought together, let men not separate. You know, everybody makes mistakes. There's no marriage that is perfect. And I believe if you are listening to this and your marriage is in a crisis, then I believe that there was also some lessons for you to learn in that. And if you haven't, then I urge you to go to the feet of Jesus and ask him, because it's not just the spouse who abandoned you. It is not just the spouse who has a filed for a divorce. It is not just the spouse who um, got the divorce. Okay. It takes two people. And one thing that I am confident to say is if you are listening to this and your marriage is in that crisis stage, has been in the crisis stage, then there is a call upon your marriage. And it is a ministry of reconciliation. When the Lord brought the two of you together, it was for a kingdom purpose. You both had to go through some things. Because if you didn't go through some things, if you didn't go through the valleys, if you didn't mess up, 
in and have that experience, you wouldn't know how to minister to other people, okay? You would just be one of those that's just posting the pictures on Facebook and you just got the perfect little family and, and just God, God is good and God is good. But the thing of it is, is there's really no perfect family, but it can come close to perfect when it is done the way that God wants it done. He wants to be the foundation of every marriage and the chief cornerstone deserves to have his rightful place. Too many people spend too much time planning in a way that they had planned for no marriage. And then when all hell breaks loose and the devil says boo, they're through. Marriage rate is at an all time high and the second marriages and third marriages, like they just keep going up and up. And if you are one of those that um, you are in the second or your third or maybe even fourth, I, no judgment here, but that that is the marriage that you know within your heart is a God-ordained covenant because a second or third or fourth marriage, it can be. Okay, not every first marriage is necessarily God ordained. Um, and that was something, and I'm careful even speaking of that, but the Lord had to really show me some things to kind of free me from some of my stubbornness. Because um, I'm very strong willed in some areas, and I hate divorce. You know, God hates divorce. Um, but I had, He had to show me that, you know, many people, it's not that it was His hand that even brought them together in the first place, you know, it was flesh. You know, whatever you birth in the flesh, you know, you're going to battle in the flesh. Now, I have seen people birth in the flesh, and I've also seen one of the spouses um, really, like, basically surrender to, to Christ, and they become, like, the, pop, the, the praying spouse. And then I've seen God do amazing things with those marriages. And uh, my mom, like, she was... Um, in a sense, and I want to be kind of careful with this because I don't want to take um, dis discredit like her marriage with my dad, but she had met him over in Germany when he was in the war and he drank. Well, she had really gone through some things in her childhood and um, really grew up in a very abusive home. And so when she met my dad and she fell in love with him, um, he wanted to marry her. And in a sense, it was her ticket um, to get out from underneath her father's roof and to uh, flee Germany. Um, but she told my dad the only way that she would marry him was if he promised not to drink again. And he made her that promise and he did really good um, for, for a while. But when he went off to the Vietnam War and he came back, um, just alcohol was, that was his crutch. That was his counterfeit. That's what he used to medicate the trauma that um, he experienced in that Vietnam War. Um, but one thing that I find so beautiful with my mom is because early on, I'm, I'm the baby of six. And so there was a lot of things that I didn't see and I didn't witness as a child. Um, but they both were kind of like in the flesh. And she she even drank. You know, they both, both drank. But um, she had what I would just, in simple terms, a, an encounter with God and um, it changed her, and she said she was never going to have another drink, and she didn't. And she became very faith-filled, like she was the spiritual backbone of our family. And um, she was just, oh my gosh, I mean, she has just left this legacy of faith that um, is, it's the most beautiful gift <laughs> that, you know, I personally can tell you. I can't sit here and tell you that it was thousands of dollars in a bank account. It wasn't some inheritance, you know, like uh, the inheritance of, of the world, but it was an inheritance of, of faith. And so she taught me many, many things. I mean, she taught me to pray. She taught me to, to believe. She taught me, you know, what, what to do, who to turn to, you know, in midnight hours and in the battle. Um, but she prayed and she never ceased praising, uh, praying and praising God um, through all of the years of, you know, my dad's alcoholism. And um, I love my dad, love my dad. He, he, they're both like past now. But unfortunately, you know, his alcoholism was a disease that really impacted our family. So the point that I'm getting at is she just never stopped praying for him. And she never stopped believing. And when she passed in 1998, 
then, um, you know, my dad really grieved that. One thing that I'm so grateful for is, you know, they said their vows and my mom, like they meant it. And she could have been one of those that because of the verbal abuse, the physical abuse, whenever, uh, before I was even born, you know, the alcoholism, she could have been one of those that just walked away from it, but she didn't. And I do believe she's an example of what, you know, we're, we're needing to start seeing in the church. And we've got to start encouraging believers to stand. There's just unfortunately not enough people. And that's what the Lord is showing me because I'm kind of like, why me? I can go anywhere. Like there's other people that are believing for physical healing. And I mean, there's just so much in me. But this is like this. I have to talk about your marriage. I have to talk about the marriage crisis within the church. And he's showing me that just there's not a lot of people speaking about it. And then, I mean, it's like, why? Why, Lord? I mean, how can you be a pastor and not speak of this? How can you not talk about marriages? <laughs> because, you know, if marriages are falling apart and families are falling apart, but then, yeah, we want everyone to come to Christ and to know God. I mean, we got a major issue <laughs> because the family in itself is, um, is falling apart. Like Satan has his hand on it. And we have got to come together and get the hand of Satan off of, you know, marriages within the church, of families within the church. And that is what he showed me the other day. He's like, the reason why you're not hearing people talk about it is because they don't have the faith. There's many pastors in the, the, the pulpit, they're not having the faith for marriage restoration and reconciliation. And unfortunately, there's a lot of them who are in their second and third marriages. And... I don't condemn them and you know I'm like I literally I try like okay I don't want to get in a position of judgment but there is a righteous anger okay um because I do know some like okay I, I know that was a God ordained an example a pastor of mine that where the Lord just did amazing work in my life many many years ago like literally God brought this pastor and his wife you know from one state to the state of Oklahoma to begin this church and they had, they had children and everybody was doing ministry. And I just saw the hand of God and the presence of God in this church. And I know for me personally, um, I really, I have a lot of testimonies of how I experienced God and grew in Christ in that church. And unfortunately, you know, he fell into sin. And uh, then it was like, I guess the marriage fell apart, but then it looked like it was restored. The next thing you know, news spread, like there was a, the divorce. And now he's remarried. And I look at that and honestly, it just grieves me. It grieves my spirit. I, I can't judge them. I mean, what's done is done, but it grieves me. And I feel like the Lord has allowed me to experience that grief because that is how he's feeling. And we just got to stop it. And I, and I said that in a previous message, like we've got to stop the divorce in the pulpit <laughs> and uh, stop the divorce in the pews. But yeah, so that is why we're not hearing a lot of Sunday sermons over marriage restorations or um, how to be the husband that God's called you to be or the wife that God's called you to be because people in the pulpit are trying to figure it out <laughs> or because they've gone through it and so they can't testify. They can't testify what God's done in their marriage because they gave up and they went on to number two or num number three. And again, I don't say that to condemn at all, but it is an issue and it concerns me. And it wakes me up at two o'clock in the morning because there is a major marriage crisis within the church. And so that my mom, she prayed. She was so faithful, so consistent. She passed in 1998. And then, um, long story short, a few years later, of course, my dad kept drinking. And um, then uh, I just remember it was on a Sunday night. I had my, my little girl and I went and I was spending time with my dad and um, I had no clue that that was going to be my last um, visit, like with my dad. I feel like I'm going to get emotional on this um, because God is so good. And even though he did not answer my mother while she was living <laughs> in the land of her living, um, I did see him ultimately answer her prayers. And, um, but I declare, I'm decreeing <laughs> that you're going to see the answer to your prayer right here in the land of the living. This is, this is just a testimony. Just got to pray it blessing you because I am, it's just coming out of me. When not plan on sharing it. But anyways, um, so yeah, I spent, uh, time with him this one evening and I remember 
he even handed me this check and it was a five hundred dollar check and I didn't grow up rich and you know my parents my dad retired from the military and then he retired from the state highway department we always had what we needed but you know we weren't the type of family like we didn't matter of fact I just remember going out to eat one time with my mom and dad so yeah we didn't go out and do dinners we didn't vacation didn't do all that kind of stuff but um so that was like a lot and I remember just telling him like you know no dad you keep that but he insisted that I take that for me and my, my little girl. And then the next day, I had received a call from my sister, and she was asking how, you know, dad was doing the day before. And I was like, you know, he was fine. Like, he was just perfectly fine. And unfortunately, just like that, he took a turn because she went to see him that morning. He had, um, uh, just wasn't doing good. And actually, I don't know if it was a Sunday night, but I don't, do you know, he ended up passing on a Monday. I just kind of gave the end of the story. But anyway, so like the next morning, she, um, uh, asked me that and then ended up having to call the ambulance and take him to the hospital and kind of longer story short with that um, he was in there for a few days and we did, we knew that um, he wasn't really going to have a lot of improvement I mean I wish I was then who I am now because <laughs> I would have been slapping the oil and all that kind of stuff but anyways you know to everything there's a timing but um, I did have God in me and I was not fully living for him but I know that he was with me this one particular night and now this was on a Sunday night because I was sitting in his hospital room and I just felt so compelled to um, get a Bible because used to and I don't know if they do it now I haven't really been in the hospital one time thank God but I used to you know they had Bibles in every hospital room and so sure enough there was a Bible on the door and I, I just remember opening it up like I didn't know much about the Bible, okay? Whenever I had to read the Bible as a little girl, I always started in Genesis and I stopped. I just went and getting it. But anyways, I uh, opened it up and, I mean, to this day, I remember it was in Psalms, but I don't remember what part. And I just remember my dad was, like, comatose. And, uh, but he was, like, very fidgety, you know, like, just, just laying there. And uh, I just began to read. And it was just, I remember feeling awkward. Because I never recalled a time of ever even talking about God to my dad. Certainly never remember my dad ever like praying with us or ever seeing him pray. My mom, on the other hand, like she was a prayer. She was a warrior. And, um, but yeah, and so I read that. And um, before I stopped, he became really calm. And then that next day, I was actually at work and I received a call from my sister. And I remember looking out the window and the phone rang. And it was really um, stormy that day because there was like a part in the clouds. And uh, I just remember looking out like, oh, that is like pretty because I love nature. I love clouds and blah, blah, blah. Um, and it was her on the phone and my dad had just passed. And so I say all that because years later, you know, the Lord had took me back to that. And he showed me that in my dad's final moments, that he did receive him as his Lord and Savior. And um, even to this day, that makes me so, so happy because I get to see my dad in heaven. Like he's there with my mom, you know, they're helping Jesus, like prepare my mansion. But all that to say is, you know, God did answer the prayers of my mother. And um, unfortunately, she didn't see it in the land of the living. But the Lord had showed me that my mother was like a Moses generation. And she was leading us into the promised land. And he gave me a word one day. And he said, Tammy, you are a Joshua generation. And from that moment on, like, I knew that for my bloodline, for my daughter, now my daughters, I, I have two more that I adopted a few years ago. But um, for my daughters, and, and technically they're, well, they got some of my blood in me. That's a long story, cool story. Maybe I'll show that later. But anyways, for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord, and we're going to go in, <laughs> and we're going to we're gonna conquer um, the, the promised land, and we're going to live in that. And, you know, I just began decreeing things. Like, you know, we, we walked in the blessings of Abraham and began breaking every generational curse that was in, you know, my bloodline and, and so forth. So all that to say is, and you can see, like, I have my mom sitting back here in her, her red little coat with this standing in the snow um, because she's such a woman of faith. And so hopefully just something in that can help you to maybe kind of have the spirit of my mom, like the spirit of God upon you to stand. It was a battle for her. And I did. I saw her cry so many times as a little girl and I didn't get it. Now, now I get it. And so that's why, you know, I don't cast a stone, you know, anybody who is feeling battled weary or even under the juniper tree. Um, but I am an encourager 
and I want you to come out from the juniper tree and I want you to rise, um, rise with this knowing that the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. And as we talked recently in another video, you know, it is the enemy that comes to, to weary out the saints. He wants to wear you out. He wants you to get under that juniper tree, eating those bonbons. <laughs> I say, man of God, woman of God, eat the bonbons, but eat them while you are walking in faith, okay? I love me some bonbons, but we can't we can't eat them giving up and get depressed, okay? And I understand the emotions. Like my mom, it was hard for her, but I can testify like she did not give up. And her and my dad did stay together. And was it always easy? No. But she didn't give up because, first of all, it was the love of God that was in her for my dad. Like that love would not let her give up. Love will not fail. Even when your, your spouse, your prodigal spouse is imperfect and has messed up and has done some of these unthinkable things that has grieved your soul to a place that it's like no other soul can relate to it. But the Holy Spirit knows. He knows the depths of that pain. I encourage you to continue to love them. Because when Christ died on that cross, it was love that kept him on that cross. And when he looked out from that cross, he saw all of your imperfections. He saw all of my imperfections. He saw all of your sin. He saw all of my sin. And he still thought we were worthy. So I pray that this day that the Lord would just give you a new set of eyes, um, fresh lenses to look through when you are looking at your spouse, and that you would develop a deeper love for him or for her, um, an agape love, the love of God. It's an unconditional love. <laughs> I mean, the type of love that says, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, I'm going to love and I'm not going to give up. Even when they've given up, even when they walked away, your love refuses to back down, sit down, shut up, and to give up, okay? We're going to look at a few scriptures. I wasn't planning on going there, but it's just been so heavy. And again, I'm just set on an assignment, an assignment that he's, he's, he hasn't released me from. And I will forever declare uh, restoration over marriages. I do know I have a voice in this hour to bring awareness <laughs> um, of the marriage crisis within the church. I just did not know in the recent month, months that pretty much every YouTube video was going to be about that. And I, I'm okay with that. Um, and I think you are too, because I know I'm sent for you. And I have received numerous um, messages. I feel myself getting emotional again, because so many of you um, are in a marriage crisis. And you have reached out and you have poured your heart out. And I hear, I hear... <laughs> your love cry. I hear your war cry. I hear your, um, your, your voice of faith, like standing for your kingdom marriage. And I can see you reaching out and you are with everything in you. You are hoping against all hope. Abraham did that. He hoped against all hope. Keep hoping against all hope. I said in a recent method, do not give up. Fight the good fight of faith. You gotta keep fighting. I know that it's hard. I know that it can be weary. But Satan is a liar, and we are not going to hand it over to him. You will not hand over your faith to him. You will not hand over your hope and your confidence to him. I am here to release words of encouragement and healing and to lock arms with you. Matter of fact, I thought of this early and I forgot. And I know this sounds really, really silly, but I want y'all to, to join me. Come on, this is a battle. If you're here listening to this, you're, you're in a battle. And not only am I being sent to roll and restore over your marriage, but for every marriage that is coming across this video. And I'm going to encourage you to do something with me. I want you to be intentional. I want you to do this. You can't really see it, me doing it because of my big blouse I have on. Put your hands on your head. And picture yourself standing next to someone. Picture yourself, me standing next to you and locking arms with you. I want you to lock arms with someone else today. They're locking arms with you. We must lock arms. And we must take back the land. We must take back the territory. We must roar together. 
two are better than one. We are stronger together. Your marriage crisis is not the only marriage crisis. Trust me, I am reading the messages. I'm getting the emails. I'm seeing the comments here on YouTube. There is a crisis all over, and it is that marriage crisis that I was even sent to this YouTube in the first place. The Lion of Judah is roaring. Let's lock arms with him, and let's lock arms with one another, and let Satan know he can't have it. Let's push back. Let's push back together the forces of darkness that is coming in, invading marriages within the church, invading um, the innocent children that are being impacted by the attacks on kingdom marriages, by the division, by the divorce. Together, let's say no more. Let's begin to roar. And many of you, you have a voice and you haven't begun to use your voice yet because you have just been fighting so hard to either get a sign of a breakthrough in your own marriage. You don't have to wait for a testimony to begin your ministry and reconciliation. You can begin today to look to see who you can release hope to. <laughs> you know, there's a scripture in See the Proverbs or Psalms, I think it's Proverbs. Um, but, uh, you know, when you refresh others, then, you know, God will also cause you to be refreshed. So look today to see who you can release an encouraging word, a prophetic word to. There are so many marriages around. Like, even if they're not in your neighborhood, like, you've got to know someone. Maybe they're on your Facebook, your social media somewhere. Maybe they're here on this YouTube. Matter of fact, right here, each of you, you can, you can drop a word of encouragement. Not, not just telling me, you know, that you're standing and asking me for prayers for yours, but I, but I encourage you to drop a word of encouragement for your other brothers and sisters in Christ. It can be as simple as stand. Decree that word. Everybody's needing empowerment. I'm hearing that. I'm hearing your heart cry. Heaven is hearing your heart cry. That's why I'm being awakened at 2 o'clock in the morning and I can't go back to sleep because I have to roar. Because this is serious. This is serious to me. This is serious to the kingdom of God. And I'm sick of what the devil has done. And I'm righteously fed up with people not speaking up. People can show up, you know, on the wedding day and be a witness as they speak these vows and waiting for the man and woman to, um, you know, repeat back the vows. But the day that all hell breaks loose. In that marriage I don't know about y'all but I don't see too many of those same pastors those same leaders that stand there on the wedding day um, show up on hell's day when souls are being shattered and ripped in two when children are crying their sleep at, themselves to sleep at night okay so yeah I'm fed up with it and I'm here again with a roar of restore over your marriage and every marriage. So lock arms with me. Maybe silly. If you're at work, if you're in a car, do one arm, do something. But do it as a prophetic act. Let's come to the front lines together and not just fight for your marriage, but fight for every marriage that has been attacked within the church. Glory, hallelujah. I wasn't really playing them all out. We're going to look at some scriptures, okay? We're going to make sure we keep that armor of God on. Now I'm lighting it up. I'm going to get some humor going because I know some of that's like heavy. But it is heavy and it's real. And the battle you are in is real. But your battle is coming to an end. Glory, hallelujah. How do I know that? Because the Lord says it. By golly. And what God said, that settles it. <laughs> hallelujah. Um, so we're going to take a look at Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2. Three, and I'm going to read out of the message Bible, and this is what the word says to you. This vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait. He knows that some of you, like you're aching. You are aching. Like anniversaries have passed. Anniversaries are coming, and you are aching. Your precious soul is aching, and I'm so sorry. But God's going to turn it for your good, and you are going to come back, and you are going to testify. Glory, hallelujah. And heaven knows, and I know, you could hardly wait, because it's been a wait. I'm seeing so many, 
and I don't, that's not a laugh, like I'm laughing at it, I don't, I don't know why I do that, it's just, it's anything that's been happening when I'm doing these videos, um, but I'm seeing so many of you, like you're telling me like a year, two years, four years, 10 years, 12 years that you've been waiting. Well, I have good news. Again, let's go back to what the Lord is saying. He says, let me back up a little bit. This isn't good stuff. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait. And it doesn't lie. What doesn't lie? The vision. God. God doesn't lie. He's not a man that he should lie. Glory. Hallelujah. If it seems slow in coming, wait. It's on its way. It will come right on time. That almost makes me just want to cry right there because I know so many of you, like you have just, you have waited, you have waited. The Lord has seen your wait and just the fighting the good fight of faith. And you have those really good days and you're up and you're strong. And you know, God refreshes you. And then that dang devil comes along. And I mean, he is like, like you're pushing through in faith. And he's trying to push you over underneath the juniper tree, okay? Like it is a battle and it is real. Bless your heart. Good, good job. Well done, man of God, woman of God. Way to stand. <laughs> Even when it's been difficult to stand. I'm so proud of you. Good job, standers. Um, and he says, it's on its way. And I feel that so strongly for you. It's on its way. The promise is on its way. The manifestation is on its way. The vision is on its way. You will see it come to pass. Glory, glory, hallelujah. People of God, I, I encourage you to truly, like this is just so strong. This is out of the message. Um, I'll read it out of the um, ESV version. Habakkuk 2.3, for still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. Many of you are like, if it seems slow, like, oh, it's been slow. I get it. You're good, though. You're here, okay? You waited this long. Just wait, wait a little longer, all right? It says, it will surely come. It will not delay. Glory, hallelujah. But please go stand on that today, okay? This is just part of your armor that I feel like many of you you need to get on. He says the vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. What is coming? Reconciliation is coming. Restoration is coming. Payback from the enemy is coming. Everything that he has taken from you, your peace, your joy, your dreams, your hope, your marriage, it is coming back to you. And it is coming back a hundredfold. Glory, hallelujah. The Lord says it is coming back to you. There was a word and it just came to me again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, miraculous recoveries. And um, he actually, the, the story of the axe head. If you haven't read that, go read that. I bought a new Bible recently, blah, blah. I was just checking it out one night, like a kid at Christmas, and um, came across the story of the axe head. And right when I read that, I heard the Lord say, Miraculous recoveries. So, what is coming? Miraculous recoveries. What is coming? That which look lost is coming back because it's been found. What is coming? That which was dead and buried is coming back to life. Glory, hallelujah. People of God keep standing. Even with your emotions and the disappointments because di the way can cause um, some disappointments. What's that scripture? Uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But I'm here locking arms with you speaking what I feel strongly the Lord wants me to speak to you because I cannot come with words of hype. I care about your marriage. I care about your family. God has given this assignment to me. So I would not do it back to you. I would not just speak something to you for you to uh, subscribe or to like this message. The only thing I want out of this is what God wants and that is his will. And what is his will? For your marriage to be resurrected. For your marriage to be restored. For your family to be reconciled. Glory. Hallelujah. Okay. I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying to keep this up too. This is, this is heavy. I love y'all. God loves y'all. We're going to get through this. Um, let me think. Hold on. Give me a second. I've got so many Bibles over. Let me see where I'm going with what's next. Okay. Yeah. I want to read 1 Corinthians 16. 
verses 13, and this is out of the Passions translation. He says, remember to stay alert and hold firmly to all you believe. Be mighty and full of courage. People of God, stay alert. The devil is lurking. He is after your hope, your faith, your confidence, your promise. He is after the word that has been spoken over your marriage. So you got to stay alert. The moment that discouragement tries to creep in, the moment that something happens and it doesn't look like what God said is going to happen, you got to be alert. You got to tell the devil, oh no, not today, devil. You at the wrong address. You got to start reminding the devil of what God said. <laughs> you got to start saying, it is written. <laughs> when the devil says, oh, they ain't coming back, <laughs> you need to say, oh, they're coming back and it is written. <laughs> when the devil says, they don't love you anymore, they don't care about you. You got to tell the devil <laughs> what God brought together. Man can't separate. It is written. You got to start fighting with the word of God. Satan is being violent against you. So rise up, warrior. Be strong. Be courageous. Fight back with the word of God. Glory. Hallelujah. Um, and you've got to stand firm in what you know. This is a very critical time. I know it can be um, difficult in the wait. And the closer that it gets <laughs> to the manifestation, Satan, all his little cohorts, began to do a little manifestation too, okay? So you got to stay alert and you got to be strong and courageous. Again, enjoy the bonbons if you want them, but do not take them and go get it under a juniper tree, okay? Keep fighting the good fight of faith. Glory, hallelujah. I want to share one more scripture. Um, this is Psalm 62 verse 5 and this is out of the passion translation as well it says i am standing in absolute stillness silent before the one i love waiting as long as it takes for him to rescue me only god is my savior and he will not fail me god is not going to fail you his word clearly says those who place their hope in him those who place their confidence in him he will not disappoint god is not going to disappoint Come to the point today that it doesn't matter how much longer you have to wait. You are going to wait upon the Lord. Psalms 46.10 says, be still and know that he is God. And what is he saying when he says, be still? He's not saying, go sit on the couch and eat bonbons and watch TV. He's wanting you to just be still. Unless he's telling you to do something different. You don't have to start sending them an email. You don't have to send them a text message. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to be creeping on their social media to try to figure out what they're doing. You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to figure out uh, what, what to do next. You don't have to figure out how you're going to try to make it work. You don't have to figure out like what you can do next. He is saying, be still and know that he is God. And your only assignment in your stillness is to intercede. You intercede for your loved one. You pray with the love of God in you for them. And you stand firm in faith. You stand fully convinced of what God said he was going to do. And God will do it. You fight, my brother, my sister in Christ. You take back your land. You lock arms with others. I'm locking arms with you all. And we are going to take back what the enemy has stolen. In the name of Jesus, glory, hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, again, I'm humbled. And I'm honored that I could be a vessel of God to speak into your life. I pray that this has encouraged you, blessed you in some way, <laughs> and that uh, my assignment has been fulfilled and certainly glorify God this day. I um, have a website, www.riseabovewithtamylynn.com. Www you can go there um, and you can click. Uh, there's a prayer request button. You can click on that. Um, you can also, uh, there's a link to contact for live coaching. If any of you want to go further than that, um, my fees can like vary on the, on the live coaching services right now to many, I'm not even charging because I care more about the restoration, the reconciliation of your marriage than I do uh, making money right now. But anyway, you can go to my website. I also upload, um, the same videos from YouTube, as well as, I haven't been vlogging, but I'm going to get back to that, 
but I'll also put on there um, prophetic words that the Lord gives me. So you could check those out. Um, or you can just drop a comment, you know, here. And, you know, I do try to, to respond the best I can. But if you are needing to connect more and just be more personal to where you maybe not, don't, don't necessarily want to put that out there on a public um, forum for everyone, then you can go to my website and uh, get a little bit more specific if you need to. Um, I'm definitely here for you. Definitely sent on assignment to stand um, with you and War Restore. And I want to keep roaring and I'll be back with more. Until next time, my brothers and my sisters of Christ continue to rise above, stand firm in faith, keep hope alive. Okay, God is not done. He will come through for you. Until next time, shalom.